Hey, hey, hey. Good afternoon instead of good morning. I got a piece of hair in the way. We got to get it in the right place. Maybe. There we go. We can, we can do a video now. All right. Hey, hey, hey. Good afternoon. I'm coming to you live in the afternoon instead of the morning because I had an appointment this morning. But I'm not going to miss a live with you guys. So here I am. All right. Um, I entitled this video, a Stroll Down Memory Lane. But first things first, if you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, notification bell, leave a comment. If you're watching anywhere else on social media, say hey. If you're watching right, live right now, say hi. And leave a comment. Alright, a stroll down memory lane. Alright, imagine our living room. And if you're friends with me in real life, you'll know. This is my mom and dad's living room. It's a big vaulted ceiling living room. And we, growing up, my mom had a roll top desk by the front. Just imagine it, you know, the roll down, all the little mail slots. And on top were some silk flowers in a nice vase um, with little bits of eucalyptus in it, dried eucalyptus. At least I think it was dried. So I know why there's dried eucalyptus in with silk flowers. So it was an arrangement my dad gave her for one of the anniversaries, so she kept it on top of this roll top desk going along. So imagine roll top desk. If you're young, you have no idea what they are. If you're older than me, you know exactly where they are. You're exactly in my mom and dad's living room right now and the roll top desk there. So for most of my, what I can remember, there was these flowers that sat on there with this eucalyptus. Well, when I grew up and I became an adult and learned about smells attached to memories good and bad a lot of things made sense and a lot of things clicked and the reason I'm giving you guys this video today is because Ellie and I were talking about smells today and I was like hey these are all hooked to memories good or bad so mine is I can't stand all right let me, let me rephrase it I used to not be able to stand the smell of eucalyptus because I could smell that dried eucalyptus, which was probably sprayed with some chemical. I don't even know why it's there. Like I told you, it was in a silk flower arrangement, but I smell that. Every time you entered through our basement, up the stairs, to right past the roll top desk, you smelled the eucalyptus. And then when I became an adult, I realized, I don't like that because I associate that with that. Well, I'll let you know if you ever smell real eucalyptus, it didn't smell like what that eucalyptus of my childhood smell like. There are two different smells, so I threw eucalyptus all out because of that one memory. The same way when I was younger, the smell of my grandparents' house was a specific smell. And then I grew up and worked at a clothing store where somebody brought clothing back and I was like, what is that awful smell? It smells like my grandparents' house. And the girl that worked with me when she said, that's mothballs. That's the smell of mothballs. So this whole time that I was raised, I was like, oh my goodness, I love this smell. It was the smell of mothballs, a very chemically nasty mothball smell. The same with when I opened up my grandparents' refrigerator and I smelled and got the Dairy Queen ice cream out. I was like, oh, this smells like my grandparents' house. That was freezer burn. Freezer burn for not auto defrosting freezers back then. I was like, that's so funny. So two bad smells that I have attached to good memories and one good smell I have attached that was bad. So the point of all I was saying was when you have something that you really strongly don't like, go back in your childhood and ask a few questions why. Why is it that I don't like this? What was this? Why is this a bad memory attached to this? Why is this a good memory attached to it? Another one is geranium. I didn't like the smell of geranium because it makes me think of funeral homes and cemeteries. Because that is the association, the one smell. There's lots of flowers there, roses, this, that, and the other. But all that my body and my brain pulled out was the smell of geraniums. And geraniums are actually really, really good for you. So it's funny how you attach. So I want everybody today to stroll down memory lane and start questioning some things that you don't like and go find the reason you don't like them and you'll really find out that it was a false belief that you believed in. It was something false that you were taught as true. 
and you need to cast that away. So like if you're afraid of snakes, don't pass it on to your son and daughter to be afraid of snakes. There is some reason why you thought in the past that you need to be afraid of snakes. You don't have to be best friends with snakes and have snakes as a pet, but you don't have to be afraid of that. Like, don't be afraid of that. Question it and ask why. My favorite things, questioning and asking why. Um, jump in our group, mom's in the middle, navigating life well between aging adults and kids. It's a Facebook group. Jump in there with us. And I was going to tell you one more story. I have one more really good story to tell you. Oh, an elevator story. Here's another thing of things that you get to adulthood and they should have never got to adulthood. I spent most of my high school and college years scared to death of elevators. I would walk up 14 flights of stairs before I would ride an elevator. And I was like, this is ridiculous. Like, I like places with escalators. I was like, I'll ride an escalator, but escalators don't go up to 14 floors. So I spent most of it my early adulthood being scared of something that I shouldn't have. And I went back in my past and I knew already where the root of it caused. My dad worked in a building that was really old now, so it was probably old then, where they had an elevator that went from the first floor, probably from the basement to the first, fourth floor, and he worked on the fourth floor. Plus it was a big, well, an old fashioned skyscraper, so it probably went up to at least 20, 25 floors. But my dad always took the old elevator that wasn't as old where you like actually it actually had sliding doors it wasn't the one where you pulled the metal grate across but just as old looking so every time we went to work or every time we went down to eat lunch with my dad me my sister and my mom would go in this elevator and it was so old of an elevator and i just love i love that i grew up in a life where you could be dangerous i love it i miss that the 70s, 80s, and 90s, you could be dangerous. Like life could be dangerous and you survived. That you could turn off the power and stop the elevator completely with a flip of a switch. So I could see him lifting my sister up in his arms because she's four years younger than me and having her flip the switch. So we're in this teeny tiny elevator, no lights on. They laugh their heads off thinking it was so fun because their job was to get a rise out of me to scare me because it scared me. But the sad thing is that scared me, took me to young adulthood. And that shouldn't have been. Like I missed out on riding elevators because of that. That if I would have learned that they wouldn't have had a reaction, they probably wouldn't have done that because the fun was, fun was, fun was going away. Like it's called getting your goat. I said to you all the time, don't tell, if you don't want anybody to get your goat, don't tell them where you hit it. So they knew that they would get a rise out of me turning off the elevator and making me scream because I'm in the pitch dark stuck between floors because it just stopped wherever you wanted to and I grew up and I realized I don't need to do that anymore that was a thing this is why they did it and I don't have to be scared of elevators so I can actually go to a place and not walk up 14 flights of stairs which is really 28 flight 28 sets of steps you have to walk up to do that so look at your things that make you nervous that you're scared of and really ask what where that start where that started at stop that and please don't pass that along to your kids you can stop what you grew up as you can stop that with your kids like Ellie's not Ellie has no idea I was afraid of elevators Ellie's not afraid of elevators Ellie rode an elevator the other day that was glass that only went up two floors by herself. She'd go up the escalator, down the elevator, up this. It's fun. It was fun to her. There was no need for us to pass our fears on to our kids. And there's also no need for you to be held hostage to these fears. No need. Get healing from it. Figure out where the root cause was from it. And just get, just figure out how you are not scared of that anymore. Like. We know now with our logical brain that didn't make sense. But I see where it started from. It started from a place of fear. Well, you can tell fear to go back where it belongs. And aren't you glad I didn't cuss? 
tell for your back to where it goes and don't pass those on to your kids. That's my two cents as a mom in the middle, navigating between older parents and young kids. So I love you guys. I will see you all tomorrow. Bye.